At the 69 Darshan, people came from 20 different countries. There were 650 Westerners in all. Tonight, we have people here from India, Washington, Oregon, a significant group from Los Angeles, New Mexico, and perhaps furthest of all from Walnut Creek. So, what the five of us are going to attempt to convey uh, in the next 45 minutes or 43 minutes. God alone knows. God alone knows. <laughs> but what we will try to do, in as much as the five of us, by hook or by crook, ended up in India for 69 Darshan, from our different perspectives and different experiences, we will try to convey that which the beauty of the film and the slides and the tape may not have, and that is the depth and breadth of feeling that we experience then and which in different degrees we take with us now, 20 years later, and the remainder of our lives. I know that for myself, when Mayor Baba dropped his physical body on January 31st, 1969, my immediate impulse was not to go to the 69 Darshan. And I know this was shared by several others. For me it was different in as much as I had, had the great joy of meeting Mayor Baba personally in 1965, and my feeling was, well, I've already met him, and he won't be there, in quotes. So why go? Rick also had the opportunity of meeting Baba and shared similar feelings. Um, and each of us had our own immediate and very strong reaction to the news of Baba's dropping his body and its effect on our plans to go to the 69 Darshan that he had called for all of his lovers. So starting with Rick, I'd like to bring forth what your feelings were on learning that Baba had dropped the body and what brought you to the decision to go to Darshan? My, I uh, really am not prepared for the question of uh, what my feelings were when I heard that Baba had dropped the body. Uh, I didn't prepare for that for tonight, so we'll have to set that. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible to describe because of the unexpectedness uh, of the news. Um, there, there was a, a whirl of every possible emotion, and as you know, uh, uh, Alan and Anise Hassan and I went to India shortly thereafter, uh, arrived just a few days before Baba's body was covered, and had the chance to be there uh, in those seven days that, that Baba's body was uh, open and available to be seen for the last time. What occurs to me as I reflect on both that trip and the later trip, because after coming back from that uh, most unexpected trip in February of 1969, a trip that I took uh, on borrowed money uh, borrowed time. I was in a graduate a student in the middle of uh, school at the time. Left me with the sense that there was no point whatsoever to go to Darshan. None at all. And I had no intention to do so. Never mind the fact that I had no money to do so. And yet I did go. I did go because sometime in the intervening two and a half months, it occurred to me that an event in Baba's world and wherever Baba had his lovers, there he was. So I wanted to be there. My major reflection is that Baba's compassion is so great that even in total ignorance, I had no idea it was a darshan either time. At the time when I went, when Baba's body lay in the crypt, or afterwards, it was a gathering in his love, uh, with with uh, no sense that with his physical absence there would be a real and actual darshan. But despite such unbelievable ignorance 
an ignorance that people steeped in uh, the traditions of the East might find impossible to believe. Uh, the, the fact is, Baba made it possible to go and to be there. So the, the compassion cutting through that ignorance, to me, is my most profound memory. Sherry, when you learned that Baba had dropped the body, having been new to Baba and planning to go to the Darshan program, what were your feelings? Was there any hesitation in you were going to the program? There was no hesitation for me at all because and actually in remembering this, um, I reread all the literature and Baba, to me, Baba said he was going to be there. There was absolutely no question in my mind that Baba wouldn't be there. I couldn't understand why people were dropping out and changing their minds on this flight because, I mean, it wasn't even hinted. It was actually stated in all the propaganda and all the literature that came out. I knew that I was going to see God. I knew he was going to be there. I knew I was going to get a darshan. It was, there wasn't any hesitation with the I never dropped out. I had, I was going with my ex-husband and my son and my future husband, actually. <laughs> and they all dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, I was very devastated that that bit of Bob had brought the body, and um, I felt I felt he had done it because he didn't want to meet me. I, I was really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from my machine. <laughs> well, um, you too had been to the internment. Uh, and had seen Baba's body, but not unfortunately animated. What was your experience? Pretty animated. <laughs> uh, I went just so they could see what Susan was going to do. That's <laughs> 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 the future husband. Actually, I, I want to reflect <laughs> 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 From the sublime back to the sublime. I want to reflect potentially a moment in history. And I say potentially because it is only my memory. And Rick and I haven't talked about this for about 15 years, but um, I think it was perhaps a day or so after Baba's entombment when we were in India. The Darshan of 1969, for I'd say about two minutes was called off. Now, I recall it, doesn't mean it happened, <laughs> but something like it happened. Uh, we were gathered on the porch uh, across from Mansari's hut, and uh, uh, most of the months we were there, the people from the West who had come over at that time. And I, I, I recall a comment after discussing how fantastic the response and the uh, atmosphere had been. Uh, that of course, some says, well, of course we'll have to formally call off the darshan. And I recall there was a first wave that I think lasted a couple of minutes where everybody nodded and yes, asked, well, of course. But then there was another wave. And you kind of feel the wave kind of just, well, maybe, and then, and then it just washed the other way. And uh, Rick and I, who had practiced ignorance at that time, <laughs> were quick to leap in with, of course, our studied Western feelings, which had been buttressed, interestingly, by us a week before or ten days before when uh, we had. Uh, and many of the people in this room had gotten together and clipped items from Baba's letters and the family's letters to kind of show that if Baba's dropping of the body was a surprise to us, it wasn't a surprise to him. <laughs> and among that were many statements that were made about the Darshan and Robert 
Robert uh, gave one of them early on. And so we were quite prepared to argue, which we did. Then, of course, the Darshan was smart. Look at the evidence, and here's what he said. Reclining in pillows and everything like that. And the momentum built so that I think after probably a half an hour or an hour, the Darshan was on. And so uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have missed it. Uh, I don't think. <laughs> okay, in terms of <laughs> being willing to miss it or not, um, as I said before, somehow we all managed to get there. And I'm still amazed to this day that it occurred for me, and I'm very, very grateful to Bob that it did. Uh, I had decided not to go. I didn't have the money, I wasn't feeling well, and in fact saw off the first California flight as it took off on Easter morning, which many of you were on. And then I called Fred and Ella Winterfeld, with whom I was very close and whom Baba had put me in touch with originally, to tell them that the flight had gotten off. And Fred said, Well, it? Buy the lunch on it? And I said, well, I'm not feeling well, I don't have any money. Um, he said, you must go. He said, Baba would be very unhappy if you didn't go. And you cannot make Baba unhappy. And he told me that Phyllis Frederick was not feeling well, and decided to switch to a later flight, and was giving me her seat. And I must go. And the next day, received a cable from Fredonella with the money to fly to New York to catch the Myrtle Beach flight. So, one way or another, Baba got all of us there. And I'm interested to, to know with the resistance that you expressed, Rick, the initial resistance, what changed your mind? What propelled you to, to go again so soon after you'd been there before? It was uh, a, a case of waking up one day and finding that the idea of not going didn't fit any longer. Um, it fit perfectly for about 45 days, almost too late to be able to make the plan to go. And then one day I woke up and it no longer fit. I said, of course I'm going to go. Uh, Baba has planned, and of course I think what's what's missing is the the impact of Baba's perfect planning, the planning that had made it possible for the Mundali, uh, in the spite of his having dropped the body, to say, of course we're going to have a darshan. Because they had witnessed his planning despite the frailty of his health, and his insisting that it would go on, and planning everything to the final detail of when the Easterners would come, and when the Westerners would come, and so on. And they uh, had lived with him too long to believe, after he dropped the body, that all this was in vain. He, he, known and shown everything else in their lives uh, to them, and uh, that, that same sense gradually came home to me. Yes, it was meant to be, and it must be. And as you say, some of us came and some of us did not. And it's my contention now, uh, if I didn't recognize it was a darshan then, then I'd like to overreact and say that it wasn't the great darshan in retrospect. I, I feel it was the beginning of the great darshan, which some available lovers on the planet helped kick off in fine fashion, as shown by these films and slides. And many lovers in the following couple of decades have continued to add force to, and the world will come along and and uh, punctuate. Remember Mani saying that, that Baba had gestured, pointing to his with a, to the ring finger. He said, "You wait, you see, my jewels will come, my jewels will come." And then he said, "The shop will be open." Once he dropped it, when he dropped the body. In the time of the darshan, that the shop is open, and that darshan goes on continually. Susan, what does it mean 
prohibit me to you then and now, in as much as you're yearning to go there and to meet Baba, which is what drew us all with such fire to be at Krishna and Darshan initially. How was it for you being there in Baba's body being physically absent? Well, you see, I never had met Baba, so I wasn't, um, I wasn't aware of what I had missed, actually. I actually wasn't aware of what I had missed, actually. And I was quite convinced that Baba was there, was going to be there. In fact, I expected him to manifest. I expected to see him. And there was a, uh, a moment when the Sufis were singing their arty, when all of the lights at Gorka saw it flicker. And I, I knew, I think everyone in the audience knew that that was Baba flickering in those lights at that particular moment. <coughs> but to me, uh, I had a phenomenal spiritual experience there. And of course, we, I was very young at, at that time. I was very excited. This was the most exciting thing that ever happened to me. I'd never been in the country before. And it was just a big party. You know, I just couldn't stop talking to everybody. <laughs> I had um, met the Mandali before everyone else because I was accidentally driven up to Gora Prasad and I was ushered in and I was asked to type. So I had spent quite a bit of time with the women Mandali and to me it was just, it was just thrilling. I was just thrilled the whole time. And um, so I, it wasn't, I didn't have the, the profound experiences perhaps that other people did. I just, I just had a wonderful time. I, I've always considered Baba the best date. Cherry, <laughs> 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 what did you feel when you were there in the Mondawi Hall of Youth Facade, looking at the chair with Baba's photo on it? Can you convey to us what your experience was? Well, um, it was just like actually what it is here. I mean, imagine looking at this chair, and I don't know how it was conveyed, I guess, by Eric, that we would now be able to come up to this chair and pay our respects to to the gardener. And I'm looking at this chair, and I'm thinking, all these people, and I've got to walk up, and what am I going to do? And I'm going to bow down. I mean, I've never, you know, I mean, I was raised in the Catholic Church, and the idea of, I mean, I know I kneel, but not bowing. <laughs> I wasn't sure what to do, and I was nervous about it, and I, started, I completely lost focus of what, what the whole thing was about. So then, I think people just got up spontaneously and started coming up. And so, as I was sitting there, I was thinking, okay, wait a minute. And I, I looked at the chair, and I said, I realized that Baba was there in my chair. And that this was my darshan, and this is why I came here. And so with that, uh, as soon as I had that perspective, uh, everything, the whole ball faded away. And when I came up to the chair, and I looked at the chair, I knew Bob was there, I just felt his presence. And I bowed down, and when I bowed down, I was completely hit by this shock, this fiery shock that went through me. And when I lifted up my head, I was beaming. I was just, I mean, my, my face, I couldn't, I can't even describe it, I was beaming. And I felt like, I felt like I was filled with helium or something. <laughs> I felt like I lifted up the ground a little bit, and then, this was the chair you, you had to turn and walk out to my door, and Rick was standing there, I think, in Francis, and I think that they were supposed to help people out of the door or something, and I'm looking, and I'm thinking, I'm not going to fit out that door. <laughs> I was actually talking about this, the experience of coming in front of the chair with Ed Van Busker, who told me something that I hadn't remembered in the last 20 years, which was that he was right behind me in the Darshan line. And I remember also being that hall on that first day and here with this chair. And I had I had embraced Baba physically and now we were this chair. And what were they going to do? And just in front of me in this line was Darwin Shaw. And when it was his turn, he did a full prostration in front of Baba's chair. And at that point for me, my heart opened in the most extraordinary way. And Ed told me, which I don't remember, that after I bowed down, the tears were streaming down my face, 
with such abandon that I had to be let out of the hall. So I think Baba was Baba's presence was very, very much there. And I'm curious, Alan, what what was it for you? Well, I was, I was trying to reflect upon that, Robin. I came across um, something I had written at that time, which reminded me. It, it was a time of, of a start, if there was a start, a great, a great learning. And it was a, a time when um, the lessons were compressed and principles were outlined and every conceivable kind of mini bit of experience whooshed through with the band. Uh, I, was, I was functioning, I think at the beginning, as a kind of tour guide. I knew that it was going to be interesting, to say the least. When I got to, I had this three-hour talk for the hotel manager. And he wouldn't, he, he seemed not to agree with anything I suggested. <laughs> That's how you got there. <laughs> I deserve that. Because I would say something and and he would go like this. <laughs> then, all right, you don't like that? Try this one. <laughs> it took me hours to figure out that yes. <laughs> The idea of Bob was going to have fun, and I was playing Lyndon Johnson later here during this most precious and powerful version of him. And he was peculiar, and in the middle, <laughs> the, I think Sherry's expansion of consciousness was a classic. I learned later that I had come down to salt deprivation and was kind of floating around. It was not to be mistaken for a spiritual experience. <laughs> Later, <laughs> and I, I was prostrate a lot more than I had intended to, but perhaps that was Bamba's lesson uh, of his, his presence really being everywhere. And if you thought you could point it to a particular time and place and space, even in that chair, you were wrong because he would sneak up at you at any time. And it was, it seemed to me that great work was going on, I didn't know what, but that it reached way, way beyond India. And that really everyone who loved Baba was there. And, and Baba was there for everyone who loved him, no matter where, where they were during that period, during that whole period. And, and I think that was the, con I agree with the continuous beginning of the darshan. It was available to everyone at any time. Um, being released from this so tempting fiction that he really wants just, just the beloved master in the body. And that release into the avatar, everywhere available, present, universal, I think began began to smoke him. Where do you see what else? I actually thought you were floating around like that because of all the paragorics you were speaking. I recall. For whatever. Of course, for time. We actually spend a great deal of time on the infirm class because we were a little hyper contrived with the same leaf. And, and we, we got a lot of chance to, pro it was an air conditioned last week and it had a fan on it, you know? <laughs> so I was one of the ones that did that fan on it. We had a lot of, we were really involved and preoccupied with missing book, as you recall. And this was like a very big thing to us at that time. That we were sure that everyone we, we ran into knew where it was. <laughs> 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 you know, it's funny how time has gone by and nobody ever thinks of it. We were like, totally jacked. <laughs> but how was it for you when you when you went up in the front of the chair? I had never bowed down to, to uh, anybody in my life. And I, I actually thought it was... I bowed down to the chair because everybody else. I mean, I, I didn't... I felt very uncomfortable doing it, but I felt very uncomfortable not doing it. So I didn't really, um, I was very preoccupied with that. 
just, you know, conforming. Um, I just felt, well, this is what these people do, and I suppose I have to do it. It was met much, much later, uh, when I, in India, that I experienced the, re the relationship of, you know, bowing down to Nirvana with you. Um, but it, during that whole Darshan period, I simply was a conformist. And I um, was, you know, to be found. So that, that bit of uh, honesty provokes me to reflect on some discomfort of my own at that time. Uh, perhaps one of the reasons that I was attracted to Bob in the first place is that he seemed so universal and so unconnected with any uh, of the ritual, tradition, uh, institutionalization of Buddhism or spirituality, which I had seen in the world before. And anything having to do with groups, group worship, group pilgrimage, group activity, left me, in relation to Baba, left me a little bit nervous. And so, for the greatest part of that entire time of the visit to Guru Prasad, I made studied efforts to do everything differently from the rest of the group. <laughs> anything and everything that would help break the spell that I was doing anything in a group, because for me that relationship with Baba was so personal. And yet his presence was so powerful that in spite of the, the uh, atmosphere of skits and uh, group songs and board the bus, 10 seconds board the bus, uh, the, the atmosphere that always accompanies any kind of group activity, his presence was so powerful that it made it clear that it didn't matter whether one was in a group or absolutely alone, you were there in his presence. Well, somehow or other, 20 years have passed. And we can tell, most of us can tell, uh, it's not by looking in the mirror, it's only by looking around the people we know from that period. <laughs> <laughs> Except that one, it doesn't age. <laughs> um, what I'd like to explore with the panel now is what the significance of the great darshan, which indeed <coughs> continues on and the seed of which was planted 20 years ago by Baba, and the significance that it has now for each of you, starting with Sherry. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What is it now? What is the, you know, this 20 year experience that goes on with the future? What is the 69 Darshan, the great Darshan now for you? In your relationship with Mother? Well, it certainly um, changed my life, <laughs> if I believe. Um, I don't know, I always felt that Baba saved me a couple of extra lifetimes from the 60s in, in the direction I was heading. I don't think that I was smart enough if I was going to straighten this all out in the short time of one year, 1969. Going from Baba dropping the body, the darshan in April, um, getting married by the end of 1969, and starting in a holiday direction. This is going from drugs, from the whole drug era, from the, the civil rights, all the Berkeley activities that I was involved in, to finding myself in a whole different path that obviously does continue today. I mean, I still find Baba doing that to me. <laughs> I mean, it's, unfortunately, it seems retrospective. I have to look back and say, oh, that happened and this happened. And I was, every time I go to India, my life redirects in some way, in some major way. Even though I don't know that, I don't plan on that, but when I look back, uh, it's almost like another life, like a new life. Yeah, really. I know that in the last family letter that Mani wrote, which was 
her experience of the teaching of Bashar, she commented how extraordinary the experience was for them, for the Mandala, to see all of us there in unexpected droves, all these young, fresh faces, 80% of whom had not met Baba in the body, and how buoyed up they were, how overjoyed they were, how they too very much felt Baba's presence and had his darshan. That it was the greatest of all darshans in their experience with him. And how wonderful that is. And it gives some perspective on how extremely privileged we were to participate in it in our own individual ways. Um, Susan, what, in looking back, you know, it was 20 years ago, we were all that much younger and new to Baba and more naive. What is it for you now? Well, when I, when I was there, I experienced a higher octave of love than I could ever have imagined, ever. And uh, being in the Mandalay was such an unbelievable experience for me because there was no resistance. They just loved me. Right. They loved all of us. It was and it, it made me aware for the rest of my life, I woke up today, that this kind of love is possible. And every time I But it was so utterly profound at that time because I'd never, ever experienced anything like that. And I, it, in fact, it affected me so greatly that the first time I was aware of it, I fainted. And then I woke up in Mayor's arms, you know, she had this, this smelling sauce. And I thought this was really a good thing, so I fainted again. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Mercia put, I wasn't as stupid, but I was traveling with Mercia's Christian. They were, that's so funny. The one on each side of me. <laughs> I don't know who it was, she told them to watch me to make sure that I didn't fall, you know, because. I was really um, so overwhelmed by this love. It was very overwhelming. And of course now that's what I, when I'm depressed or when I have moments that I feel very alone, I, my mind goes back to those times and it's a constant source of energy and of spiritual relief. Alan, what about you? Well, I was just thinking, uh, Robert, when I, when I look around, I, I, I think that the notion that 20 years has passed is a scam. <laughs> I think it's a trick. Now, it's, this is belied by the fact that I was told there is one or two 19-year-olds here tonight who were in utero at the dark <laughs> Killed by theory, but I still think <laughs> it's a sham and a illusion. And uh, both during during that darshan and since then, it is it sneaks up on me the realization that here we are now again. And maybe it isn't a different now. It looks like a different now, <laughs> but I don't believe it. To tell you the truth. And uh, <laughs> remind me of that sometimes. <laughs> but I had kind of, I, I don't think I, I have a good memory of a difference uh, from the time between um, early in January, early February of 1969, and the Darshan, even now, that that difference tends to fade away. And, but I can surely recall that the, uh, that the push of more nowness in Baba's in that part of the now. And it's very nice to refresh that part of the now in this part of the now now. <laughs> the author of the Mastery of Consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> when we were on the airplane, he was sitting over here, you know, by the window, of course. And I was always like flying over. Not once did he say, would you like to sit by the window? <laughs> so, of course, <laughs> 
I'm sitting here listening to all this, seeing what occurred, and I can't help thinking that, uh, well, one thing comes to mind that is a little bit of that on January 31st, 1968, a year before Baba dropped his body, he requested Mara to greet the man Mandali, something that had never happened in all the decades of her life with him. So strict was her seclusion. And so, by arrangement, according to Baba, over to the porch, which is now referred to as Mara's porch. Mara, nervous, holding Baba's hand, stood beside Baba, who was seated on the porch because of his frail health. When the men came and stood before the porch, before Baba and Mara, she folded her hands and said, at Baba's instruction, J. Baba. Those two words only greeted the men monthly and looked at them for the first time. And they said, J. Baba, Mara. And it seems that with Baba's perfect indication by the choice of the date, and the, that he was initiating a different in which Mara and those who had this hands and eyes and ears be his physical contact with his lovers because he would have to drop the body. And it seems that this darshan that we're celebrating was like an icebreaker starting something that would go on for 700 years. Baba had said in 68, something great will happen. Soon after May 1968, that has never happened before and won't happen again for billions of years. At that time, uh, this is everyone but anything and everything will happen, but it will be dramatic. And I'm not sure that I know anyone who has said that's what happened, this is it, this is what he meant. But I wonder if something so silent, something we now take so much for granted, could be that something great, that after dropping his physical form, and for certainly these two decades, without structure, without organization, without any form of organization that creates the, the mechanics to get from here to there, hearts go, love flows, and people make to their beloved, the Divine Beloved, in the absence of its physical form. And it seems to me that that event that we call the Great Darshan was the beginning of a great Darshan that he's made possible. Leaving there. Well, keep it. The time of water. Part of Bob is got the timing of that. And thank you very much for participating in tonight's program <laughs> with some mild reluctance. I won't name the name. Uh, it's really been marvelous. We're going to hear the Hindi arti now that Madhusudan wrote, uh, I believe, and played for Baba.
after which there's going to be a 15-minute intermission. There will be liquids and cookies available in the back. Um, we must limit the intermission to precisely 15 minutes, no longer, as we do have to be out of here by 11. I would also suggest that if any of you are so inclined who are sitting on chairs, that some of you might care to give them up for people sitting on the floor. Uh, and a good exchange for the two halves of the program. So let's have the Hindi Aki now, and then the 15 minute intermission after which we'll be Thank you very much. Goodbye.